Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday. I'm Anne Merchant, I teach in country Western Victoria, Australia. So it's great to have you with us today and if you're listening to the recording, thank you for listening to it. I'm really interested in hearing what Mark has to share. Mark's always done fabulous demonstrations and presentations in the past for us and Scratch has just had a big update. So we've now got Scratch 2.0 and Mark's not only going to talk about that with us, but the other block computing type tools as well, such as Microsoft Kodu. I think you've just got Makey Makey, so I'm interested in hearing about that because I want to order it as well. So just before we formally start though, it's always great to see where everyone's from. So if we could grab a little clip art or a laser tool. So if you want to go to clip art down the bottom of the whiteboard toolbar, and there's lots of little options in there for you to choose. If you could just place a marker on the map where you are from. And Nick and Peggy will make you moderators today too, so there's just a few of us. So can we just put on the map where we are from? So on that whiteboard toolbar, we have the option. Um, <laughs> so that's me and Nick in Melbourne. And Mark, did you get it? There's a a toolbar, okay, so see the toolbar to the right of the participants. Uh, next to the video option, there's a little whiteboard toolbar. If you click on the bottom one, so the top one's an arrow, if you click on the bottom one, it's got place clip art on this page. Click in there, and then you find a tab that says common symbol, and you grab it from there. Did you get it, Mark? Otherwise, I'll do it for you. And hello, Veronica. I wonder if Veronica's my friend from Malaysia, but she might put me chat in a minute. Okay, hang on, let me tell you. So there's to the left is the toolbar for the whiteboard. I'll grab a screen up for you, which might make it quicker. So we need you to click on the bottom option. But Mark, I hope you can see the toolbar. I've just dropped it on the whiteboard, but it might take a time to get through to you. Can you see the toolbar? Oops, hang on. Let me expand it. So down the bottom of the toolbar, can you see it, Mark? So if you look on the whiteboard now, oh, you've got it. <laughs> There's a little clip art option there. You click in there, and then you choose the tab that says clip art. So Veronica, um, would you be able to tell us in the chat where you are from? Yeah, well done. So uh, we might just move on to the next page. Oh, well, Mark, it's up to you now. So back to you, you can share your screen, chat, use the video. So just to let people know, you can actually pull that audio video module out of its socket and you can drag it onto the whiteboard and make the video larger so you can see it. So I hope you'll all understand how to do that. You just grab the module in the top, pull it out onto the whiteboard and make it bigger if Mark uses the video. Okay, Mark, over to you. First of all, I'd better say that Mark is from the UK, in London. It's 7 a.m. or 7.07 a.m. in the morning. So thank you very, very much for um, giving up your holidays because I think it's your, uh, what would it be, spring break now for a week. So great to have you, Mark. And you might like to tell us a bit more about yourself anyway. Over to you, Mark. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Anne. Um, I'm a bit sleepy. I've only been up a little while. It is 7 o'clock in the morning here. Um, good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, welcome. Um, I'm Mark. I'm currently a teaching assistant in two schools in South London. Mostly work with 9 and 10 year olds. Um, so at Melbourne School, I help out with all the ICT, and I work with children from 4 to 11, and I love it. But before then, I used to work in uh, IT industry or the computing industry, and way, way, way back, I used to be a computer programmer. And way, 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 way back, I was given a home computer by my dad, and I want to very quickly show you my very first computer program. So I'm going to show you a an emulator for a BBC microcomputer. So if I can work out how to do this, tools, application sharing. Oh, here we go, right. 
äh, Null. Oh, oh here we go. Right, can you all see this? You should all see a BBC microcomputer in front of you. Can you see that? Yes, Mark, we can. Oh, brilliant. So what I want to do is show you the very first computer program I wrote way back in 1980-something. So it was a shopping list program, and all it does is work out the total cost of your shopping list. So here is the very first program I wrote. I think prices have gone up a bit since uh, I went shopping way back then. Uh, so this is a really simple programming language called BASIC. Uh, but you have to type in everything by hand. Plus milk, plus bread, and then uh, print the total. So print the total is semicolon t. So this is BASIC and you have to run your program. So you just type run and hit enter and it says the total is 35. Now, what I can do is I can change my program slightly and we can actually ask for what the prices are. So let's get my space. Uh, input milk. So relist my program. I've changed my program, press run and ask for the price of eggs. So it's gone up a bit now. 15 for eggs, 75 for bread, and milk is now an astronomical 125, and there is the total. So that is actually my very, very first computer program, and I'll be coming back to that later. Just want to quickly show you my T-shirt. So if I switch on my video camera, can you all see my T-shirt? It says Code Club. Hello, world. So I'll be coming back to that. Right. And Mark, don't forget to press the talk button when you want to talk. Can you hear me? Oh, hang on. Right, I got you. Yes, yes, we can. Right, so I'm just starting up um, Internet Explorer. So Scratch 2.0 runs in any web browser uh, that has Flash. Um, it's taken about just over three years to develop. Um, and there are there are plans to make it run on your computer without being connected to the internet. There's a version coming out later this year, um, and I'll talk more about the future of Scratch a bit later. Right, let me work out how to share this. Uh, why is Internet Explorer not listed? Tools, start sharing. Oh, here we go. Right, so here's Internet Explorer. Let's make it a bit smaller. Right, I hope you can all see that. I can, Matt. So, okay. else needs to be able to so to go into Scratch 2.0, you go to scratch.mit.edu, and that's it. No email required, no sign up required, no password required, absolutely nothing. Um, you can just go to this website, everyone can go to it. As long as your internet browser has got Slash, it works on Chrome, it works on Firefox. Once you're here, you just press create. Wait a few seconds. And here is the brand new Scratch. It's less than three years, three weeks old. Um, came out earlier this month. Some things have moved around a bit. Um, there's this new tips window. And if I scroll down the bottom, it can show you how to do things. But I'm going to get started. So a few things have moved around, but some things are exactly the same. So we still have our motion blocks, our looks blocks, our sound blocks our pen blocks, um, variables is now called data, um, events and control have been split into two. They're both still brown. Um, 
all the when I and when I receive and broadcast blocks are all in the event section, um, and all the control things are now all in the control section. So they've just separated those out. Sensing is the same. There's a couple of new things in there I'll talk about in a moment. Operators is the same. And your blocks is brand new. So I'll be coming back to that in a second. Right, let's start making our program. So let's get back to my shopping list. Uh, right, here we go. Right, so what I'm going to do is we need to find out the price of things. So how much is bread? How much is our eggs? How much is milk? So I want to ask three questions. And this being scratch, you need somewhere to put the answer. So just like in my program, I need some variables. So I want to click on data, make variable. I want to make it for this byte only. And we're going to have eggs. bread and milk. So there's my three my three variables up there. Um, and what I'm going to do now is use the set. So you just click on this little drop down here. Uh, this one's bread. And this one is milk. That one's milk, and this one is X. So I've created three variables. I want to join this all together. So there's inputting our items to our shopping list. What we need to do, though, is have somewhere to store the total. So we're going to have a place to store the total. And then the total is going to be made up of adding everything together. So in operators, I need to use add. So if I go back to data, I need to add up the bread and the eggs. So unfortunately in Scratch you can only add up two things at once. So I need to use another one. And I'm going to add in the milk. And then I'm going to add it all together. So I just drop that in. Drop this one in here. There we go. No. I want it drop in. Now, there we go. Right. No, that's not right, done it either. Right. Hang on. Should be able to just drop this. Oh, yeah. It's at the beginning. Right. There we go. <coughs> and then I might just set the total to the whole thing. So, make sure I pick it all up. Just drop it into there. There's our total. Um, right. We better find out what the actual total is. So, I'm going to get scratched to. Tell us the total. The total is. And again, being scratch, you have to join things together. So I'm going to put the total into this join block and then find the total, which is here. Join those together and pop it in here. And then we need a way of starting our program. So in, in the basic program I showed you, you have to press run. In scratch, you have to press the green flag. So you press the green flag. How much is bread? Ten. How much are the eggs? Twenty-five. How much is the milk? Forty-five. And the total is zero. No, it's not. Hang on. Oh, why did that not work? Ah, oh, I know why. Right. Set so bread to zero. We need to put some variables in. Right. So. In sensing, I need to set the answer. So <clears throat> in the blue ask block, it puts the answer in the answer block. So let me put that in. There we go. Right, it's the green flag. Right, so bread is 25, eggs is 30, and the milk is really cheap today. It's 5, and the total is 60. So there's the same program I showed you in Scratch. Right. So Mark, Chris has a question for you. So Chris, do you have a microphone? Can you just please talk and ask Chris, um, Mark your question, please? It was in regards to sprites. 
Hi Mark, thanks for doing this um, presentation. Just a question, when you um, set up that variable there, you can choose to assign the variable to the sprite or, or to all sprites. I'm just wondering what the use cases are for making that decision. Okay, good question. Okay, when you make a variable, <coughs> you could choose to make it for this sprite only. So Scratch right here can only see the variables that you make. Or if you want anywhere in Scratch, you can create a global variable. Um, and that would work anywhere in Scratch. So any any sprite or the stage could access this variable. So I just quickly create one. So they're called global variables in um, other programming languages. So that's the reason for um, all sprites. Something that's brand new in Scratch 2.0 are cloud variables. Um, you have to be able to sign in to use cloud variables. And I'm not too sure if they've switched it on just yet. They're still working on it. But the idea is that if two or more people log in and access the same Scratch program, then with cloud variables, they can all sort of talk to each other. Um, I played with the beta early this year. And I had like two sprites talking to, it, to people within each of it. But that's a brand new thing in Scratch, and they're still working on it. So that's cloud variables. That's for all sprites. And this is for this sprite only. So let me get back to what I was going to do next. Oh, yeah, what's new in Scratch? So I've done my shopping list. Right. I'm going to create a new program. So here we go. I'm going to talk about brand new more blocks. OK, what I'm going to do is, is draw a square. So I'm going to move 40 steps. I'm going to turn right 90 degrees. I'm going to repeat that four times. I'm going to start it when I press the green flag. I'm going to put the pen down. And I'm going to clear the screen when I start. So press that, I get a square. So lots of squares. Let's get scratch pointing to the right. There we go. So I've, I've got a little block of code here to draw a square. So what I can do is make block. And what I'm actually going to do is create a block called shape. Uh, for older children, you might want to call it polygon. And I'm going to give it two inputs. So press the options, add a number input. The first one is going to be the length. And press it again, and then the number of sides. So I'm going to press OK. So here's my new shape block. And it's going to be the same as what we had before. But now that I've got the length of sides, I can move the length of sides and just drag it down. And then we need to repeat it, the number of sides. And instead of turning right 90 degrees, we can calculate what that is. So I want to do a bit of division. It's going to be. 360 divided by the number of sides. Pop that in here. And then I go back to my block. So I've got a new shape block. So I'm going to make the length 60 and the number of sides 4. Uh, when I press the green flag, I get a slightly bigger square. But the great thing about this now is we can have any size and any shape. So I can have 50 lengths and Sides five, press the green flag, and I get a pentagon. Or if I change it to six, press the green flag, I get hexagon, and so on and so forth. So we have an octagon, and I could have a ten-sided shape. So there we go. So there's my new shape block. But what I can then start to do is create a pattern. So I'm going to create another block and call it pattern. Here it is. And what I'm going to do in pattern is draw my shape. So here's my shape. And then I'm going to turn right 10 degrees, and I'm going to repeat that. Thirty-six times. So thirty-six times ten is three hundred and sixty, 
go back to more blocks and now I can just change my script and call pattern and I start to get a pattern on the screen. So there's my pretty pattern, I'm going to add some colour to it. Uh, change the colour. Change pen colour, there it is. And then this time I'm going to have a hexagon. There we go. So that's the new make blocks, quick example there. Um, so I think that's got lots of possibilities there with being able to make your own blocks. Okay, next thing I'm going to show is start a new one. In sensing, we now have video. So I might have to switch on my webcam. Okay, so you can now see my webcam. Um, what I'm going to do is create a little program that will let you move Scratch with your hand. So, program needs to start. So when the green flag is clicked, you need to switch on the video. So turn video on. Um, okay, I need a variable. So I might call it video for this sprite only. So here's my video. And I'm going to make it the value of instead of motion I'm going to call it direction and I'm going to do it forever so that it keeps doing it over and over and over and over again and if I pop that up here you'll now see when I move my hand it goes negative and when I move over here it goes positive ok so you can see the video number changing. Now Scratch doesn't do anything because we haven't told it what to do yet. So let's do that. I'm going to press the red stop button and then I'm going to add a bit of logic to our program. So if uh, right, if the video is less than so if the video is less than zero I'm going to move backwards so that's minus 10 steps and if the video let's get my greater than block if the video is greater than zero I'm going to move forward ten steps so I want to pop that in here oh, missed out the move block, here we go, pop the move block in so if the video is less than zero, go back ten steps if the video is greater than zero move 10 steps, so let's try this. So here he is, there's Scratch, move him back, I can move him forward. So that's all with my hand. Oh, careful he doesn't wander off the screen. <laughs> there you go. So that's just a quick example of using the new um, video block. What do you think so far? Um, Mark, fabulous. <laughs> We've just got a few questions in the chat. Another one is from Chris. How is video direction defined? Or well, Chris, do you want to grab the microphone so that you can interact with Mark? Yeah, hi again, Mark. Uh, my, my question on that was you've created a variable called video and you've set it to the video direction. I'm just wondering what actually is the definition of video direction because it's, it's clearly not actually doing anything like hand tracking or, or tracking specific points in the video. So how is video direction kind of interpreted by the software? Okay, um, can you see my picture as the background to scratch? And can you see my hand waving? Uh, uh, <laughs> very slowly, yeah. Okay, so when I turned on the video, Okay, in the background to my stage, my webcam came up, and then yep. when I changed when I changed this video block, I changed it from motion to direction. And if I run my program now, I'll do it slowly. But my hand, when I move my hand to the other side of Scratch, it goes negative. In the 
you should see the number at the top. And when I move it the other side, actually, Scratch has just gone off the screen. Let me bring him back. So when I move my hand this way, the video variable goes negative. And when I move my hand the other way, must stop Scratch from going off screen. When I move my hand the other side of Scratch, it goes positive. There it goes. So I'm actually using my hand in conjunction with my webcam to move Scratch. Yeah, I get that. I'm just wondering, like, it's because it's not actually tracking key points on your hand. Is it actually just looking at the general content of the video frame and, and looking whether pixels are moving one way or the other in general? Um, I don't know. It's just it's just how Scratch works. It's just what it does. Um, I don't okay. think they've updated the documentation yet, and this is just what I've discovered. Um, if I change direction to motion, we can see what change it has. Well, let me ask the question a different way. If, if I had the camera background was, say, a student standing there from, and I was capturing the student from head to toe, and that student took a step one way or the other, is that also going to affect this a variable called video di the direction? Um, I don't know. I think we'll have to try it, is my yeah. answer. Um, Mark, we might just ask Nick to take the microphone because I think he's played this video and he said in the chat it depends on whether you've chosen the sprite or on this stage. So Nick, do you want to grab the mic for a minute? Yeah, look, I, um, I, I believe it's you know, where you've got video motion on this sprite. If you do the drop down menu and there's on the stage, that will slightly depend. So if you've you've touched the sprite from one side, um, th then it will recognise as negative. Like if you're moving over the sprite in one direction, um, then it's negative, or over the sprite in the other direction, it's positive. But yeah, I'm I'm very much just playing with it and trying it myself. My connection's pretty laggy, so I'm going to have to properly look at it later on when it's a bit faster. Yeah, no worries. I'll just have a play with it. I just thought there might be an obvious answer. That's all. Okay. Um, in new in Scratch is help. Um, and did this the other day. Oh, here it is. Right, help, block help. So up here is the question mark. Uh, so if I go down to sensing and click on the video motion, see it just says coming soon. So I think we're still waiting for them to write down what all this new stuff does. Okay, so that was just a quick introduction to. Um, Scratch and Scratch 2.0. I'm now going to show you my makey makey. So I'm going to start a new Scratch. And I'm going to get rid of this Scratch here and create some new ones. So this is the new sprite library. I'm going to go to things and wait for this to come up. I'm going to add some bananas. An orange. Oh, I like that orange. Okay, so I've got two sprites. Okay, so something that's new in Scratch 2.0 is you click here and you can change the properties of a sprite. So this one's called Bananas, and I'm going to change mine to just be called Banana. And this one is called Orange 2, and I'm going to call this one Orange. And uh, let's get them to do something. So click on my banana. And when it is clicked, I'm going to say something. OK, so it's going to say hello, everyone. So if I switch on my video camera, OK, I can't switch on my video camera. Hang on. 
probably because Scratch is using my camera. So I'm going to close down Scratch. Start a new one. So just bear with me a second. So Mark, I don't know if you're talking to us or not, but just click on the microphone. Sorry, forgot. <laughs> right, so um, I'm back to where I was. Uh, when I click on the banana, it's going to say, hello, everyone. So if I click on this, it will say, hello, everyone. But what I'm going to do is show you my Makey Makey and open it up. And inside are some cables with... Um, Cocktail clips, a USB cable, the red one is the USB cable, so it's just a standard USB cable, and got some cables with cocktail clips, and what I'm going to do is show you what I've got in this bag here, and guess what, I've got a banana, and um, Orange. So what I'm going to do is take out my Makey Makey. It's a tiny little control board and it has, if I take it really close, I hope you can see that, it has an up, down, left and right, an enter and a click. And what you do is you take the orange USB cable and on the back, so on the back right here is where you plug in the USB cable. And then I plug it into my laptop. And there it is plugged in. And then I went to take a keyboard, uh, take a crocodile clip cable, and I want to plug this into the click section. So. Hopefully, I can plug this in, but it says click. So, take this up real close. There's the click. And then I'm going to plonk my, open up my banana. And I'm going to literally just plonk in the other end of my pocket jar clip into here. So that's my banana connected up to my Makey Makey. Um, Mark, I've lost sound again. Are you talking? That better. So what I've done is I've plugged the orange cable from my Makey Makey board into my PC, it's USB cable. I've plugged in the grey cable from the click section on my Makey Makey.
Good luck to Sam again, Mark. Right. I have a feeling that my my camera and my video and my microphone are all getting a bit confused. Right. I've plugged the click section on the Makey Makey into my banana. I've clicked the red cable. Um, Mark, can you just click microphone again, please? Hi, everyone. Right, I'm going to talk through this. And then if I go back to Mark, just to let you know the sound's going once more. Right, sorry about that. It looks like I can't have my video and talking at the same time. But hopefully you can see what I was doing. Um, the Makey Makey has um, six cables. You can have up, up down, left and right, um, click and space. And it's just a matter of in Scratch deciding what everything does. So in the control section, if I click on the orange, in events, I can use the keyboard. So, for example, when the space is pressed, I could get it to move. Or I could get it so that when the up arrow is pressed, I could turn 90 degrees. So, the idea is um, within Scratch, you decide what you want your Makey Makey to do and see how it goes. So I just, want, really just wanted to show you a little quick intro to the Makey Makey. Okay, the next thing I want to show is Kodu. So this comes from Microsoft Research. Um, Mark, um, Mark, can we stop you just for a minute? What actually happens when you plug it into the banana and have the scratch code? Okay, um, the, the the control board, you plug the there's a USB port on the back and you plug that into your PC and it just acts like a keyboard. You don't need to install any device drivers and when you connect up the cables, you just plug them into anything that can conduct electricity such as fruit. Um, you can even, on a piece of paper, draw with a pencil and draw your own circuit diagram. And it just senses that when the two connect, it sends that key to Scratch. So in Scratch, it's just a matter of when something is clicked, when you press space, when you press um, up, down, left, or right. So Mark, it was Peggy who actually asked the question. Peggy, are you happy with the answer? Okay, so go ahead, Mark. Just need the microphone on again. Yeah, thank you, Anne. Um, I want to just quickly show you Kodu. This comes from Microsoft Research, and this is more about games design. Um, so let me start up Kodu. So let me share that. Okay, it takes a few seconds on my laptop to start up. So, Mark, is Kodu only for Windows? So Kodu is only for Windows. It runs on XP, Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8. Um, and I think there's also a version for Xbox. It's free. 
Um, I'll give you the link to it at, at the end. So I hope you can all see Kodo. Yes, we can, Mark. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so it's just starting up. I'm going to be using a keyboard, but it does also work with Xbox controllers. Um, you just plug them in. Okay, so here's Kodo. I'll just give it a few seconds to make sure everyone can see it. So, Mark, while it's loading, uh, Chris wants to know, have you looked at Tinker, T-Y-N-K-E-R, and then Peggy asked, uh, do you think it would work on a map running parallel? So, two questions. Have you used Tinker? And would it work on a Mac running parallel? Okay, I, I came across Tinker last week, but I've not had a chance to look into it in any detail. Um, and I don't know about whether or not it could run on a Mac under Windows. I suspect it probably could. I think it's one thing that we'll just have to try. Okay, so hopefully you can see Kodu's main menu here. Um, I seem to have lost my mouse. There we go, right. Um, I'm going to start a new world. So here's a brand new world in Kodu. And I'm going to click on this object tool and click somewhere on my world and I went to add a Kodu. So there's Kodu sitting and waiting. Um, if I run this, just press the green play button, nothing much will happen. In fact, nothing will happen at all. Kodo will just sit there, just waiting around, doing absolutely nothing. And the reason for that is that there's no program. So I press escape and click on the object tool. And if I right click on Kodo, I can add a program. Not that one. Uh, Right, right click and choose program. So look, what happens in Kodu is when something happens, you do something. So you just click on the plus and what I'm going to do is choose keyboard and then add the arrows and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move uh, slowly. So what you do in Kodu is it's a bit like Scratch in that you have all the commands and it's just a matter of choosing from all the objects. So I'm just going to show you what happens when I use the keys on my keyboard to move Kodu. So when I run this, press the green play button, and I can move around. So there we are, I'm moving around. And what I'm going to do now is add some more objects. So what I'm going to do is add an Apple. And another apple. Oh, lots of apples. Okay, so I've added some apples, and then what I'm going to do is add a object. So there's loads and loads of objects down here. Um, so let's add a fish. Oh, yeah, fish. So there's our fish. Let's give fish something to do. So program. When the fish sees an object, which in this case is going to be an apple, I'm going to launch a object which is going to be hang on change that oh it's just launch
going to launch a oh, where has it gone? Hang on, let me just try that again. Like when I see an apple I am going to do actions. Where has it gone? Okay, my mouse isn't working. Help. I can't actually see my mouse, so just bear with me a second. It's funny, Mark. We could see your mouse, but it's just very slow, the graphics loading. So if you just keep talking us through it, we can okay. see what you're doing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is launch a missile. So actions. Actually, I'll tell you what. That's it. Actions. Launch. Objects. Okay, I might just launch it. So when I see an apple, it's going to shoot. <laughs> so it's going to shoot. What we need to do now is get Kodu to go and eat. So what I'm going to do is when I'm going to click on Kodu, right click on Kodu and choose program. What I'm going to do is that when I bump, so when I bump an object which is going to be in the more section an apple in the do section I'm going to go to game and I'm going to add something to the score and I'm going to get 10 points so whenever Kodu bumps into an apple I might add 10 points to my score so I'm going to run that so hopefully I can click on eating the apples before I get shot down. So I just wanted to give you oh yeah, I just wanted to give you a very quick introduction to Kodu. Uh let's see if I can come out of that. How do your students find it, Mark? Are they engaged with her? Um yeah, definitely. Um there's a book that's just come out called Kodi for Kids. Uh, that is, and this is like a handbook or a manual, and you could easily give this to 10 and 11 year olds upwards, and they can work through Kodi. It covers absolutely everything you could possibly need. It's got loads of pictures. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. It's called Kodi for Kids, and I thoroughly recommend it. Okay, what was the next thing I was going to talk about? Oh, App Inventor. Am I, have I got enough time, Anne? Uh, yeah, we've still got seven minutes. Can you do it then? Because I'd like to hear that. Would you love it yet? You've got it okay. from the others as well. So, um, App Inventor used to be a project from Google. They've now passed it on to MIT. Um, the same part of MIT as Scratch. Um, it works with Android phones. You don't actually need a phone. It works with. Um, it does come with a emulator. Um, I'm just going to start it up and show you. The reason why I wanted to show App Inventor is because of the way that you do the programming. Um, it's all based on blocks. So I'm just starting it up on my PC. Oh, here it is. Right. So I'll share that. So this is App Inventor. Um, I'm going to click on Explore, and then I'm going to click this big brown button that says Invent Your Own Apps Now. I'm going to create a new project called TT3. So 
uh, go back to my project site. In the new project, TT3, Okay, so you start off with a blank screen and you have lots of objects. So these are like sprites in Scratch. And what I'd like to do is add a text box. So I'm going to try to drag a text box over. Then I'm going to add a button and a label. So when I click on them, you can see here what I've added. I've added the text box, the button, the label, and you can rename them. So I'm going to call this text box name. So TXT name, I might call this press rename, I might call this a uh, button. Oh, I just want because this is a mobile phone, I might call it touch me. And then in the label, I might call that hello. So I'm going to make that LBL for label. So I've got three objects. I've got my uh, text box, my button, and my label, and all the objects have properties which are down the side here. So I could change the font size. I could change the text here. So I'm going to get someone to enter their name. And then text for label one, which I'm going to empty. So there's our um, adding our objects to our screen. And then what I'm going to do is open up the block editor. Now the block editor runs in Java. So it does take a little while to load up, and I might have to share it. So if I share that, so I'm going to stop sharing the blocks and start sharing the editor when it comes up. So this does take a little while to load up. And then once the editor loads up, you'll be able to see how we use blocks to actually do the programming with our phone application. Uh, here it comes, right. Okay. So hopefully you can now see the block editor. Just make it a bit smaller for you. So this is the block ad editor in App Inventor. And if I it comes with a whole load of built in blocks. So there's text blocks, lists, math objects. You probably start to recognise some of these as they look exactly the same as Scratch. These are all the built-in blocks. And then under my blocks, you'll see that the objects that I've added have been put here. So what I can do is, when I click on the Touch Me block, I can just drag when I've clicked it, and then I can do something. So what I'm going to do is, when I've touched it, I'm going to, in the label for Hello, I'm going to set it. So I just drag the block into there um, to the text box. So here's the text box. Find the, there it is. Uh, there it is, so the text, actual text. So what this is going to do is you have to type in your name at the top and then it will change the label to what you've typed in. So if I actually run that, so you click on connect device and click on Wi-Fi. Then I grab my mobile phone. There's a QR code waiting for me. And on my phone, so on my phone, there is a little Android robot. It's a companion application that you have to install from the Google uh, Play Store. And then on here, it's asking me to press a button to scan the QR code. So I'm going to scan the QR code. OK, 
Okay, so I've scanned in this QR code, and now on my phone is that very app. I don't know if you can see that. Probably hasn't come out too well. Uh, try. So on my phone is that app, and when I type in my name, so Mr. Grossman, when I press enter your name, the label has appeared. Probably, I don't think I can show this too well. But I just wanted to very quickly give you an introduction to um, App Inventor. I'm done, Anne. Thank you, Mark. That was wonderful. You always demonstrate so clearly. Um, uh, Peggy just she said she scanned the QR code, but she just got the I H C S U G. Uh, but yeah, I agree with um, Mick. The app inventor looks really good, uh, and he's just saying perhaps it won't work on the iPhone. Um, look. Mark, did you want to quickly mention the Code Club and is it going to go global? What do you know about that? Can you tell us that in a minute? Yeah, I can do that. Let me just bring up their website. So Code Club has been going um, since last year um, in the UK and a couple of weeks back they announced that it's going to go worldwide. Code Club is aimed at 9 to 11 year olds. You can use, it works fine with older children uh, but they're concentrating on 9 to 11 year olds. Um, at the moment, there's three terms. Term one is an introduction to Scratch. There's nine different applications, games that children can make, um, level one, level two, level three, and it comes with um, instructions on how to put them all together. The children just follow the instructions um, to make their own games. Uh, the idea behind Code Club, though, is to get people who work in IT to go into schools and spend an hour after school doing the actual club. If I just share their website, uh, there it is. So here's Code Club's website. And the idea is that um, you can either run a club if you're an IT person, or if you're a school, you can find a volunteer. Um, and down the bottom is a map of all the clubs um, that are running in the UK. But as I said, um, Hopefully in the next two or three weeks they'll be making the announcements about it going global. You can find out all about Code Club here. In fact, I'm wearing a my Code Club, especially for you guys, my Hello World Code Club T-shirt. Thank you very much, Matt. Look, I'm going to wind up now, but we'll leave the room open for another five, ten minutes in case people have questions. And as Peggy said, there's quite a few codes, the clubs there in the UK already. Um, I'm just going to take us back to the whiteboard for a minute, Mark. And just to thank Mark so much, it's now spring break in the UK for Mark. So um, thank you for getting up early in the morning for us, Mark, and sharing your great expertise and experience. And thank you everyone else for coming. It's great to have had uh, like Chris and, and Mick in here too because they've used uh, some of those programs. I know Mick probably has used them fairly extensively too, so thank you. Um, just to let you know, next week we're just going to have a chat about hashtags. You know, how important are they? How can you create them? What do they mean? What are some of the popular ones? What can you share on them, etc. So that's next week, June the 6th, same time, but a different month. Thank you again, everyone, for coming. Mark, I don't know if you want to share your blog. Or are you doing that in the um, chat now? Your blog address, maybe, and contact details. So we'll leave the room open for another five, ten minutes. Does anyone want to grab the microphone and ask a question? Or did I miss any in the chat? Um, okay, if I show you yes. the, the back of the Makey Makey, could you see it says space and click? Yep. And um, up, down, left and right, there's like the four arrows. What you do is yep. you, you, you connect the crocodile clips into any of those, so there's six. You could actually plug in um, six cables 
one cable into each, and all that does is this pretends to be a keyboard on your PC. It probably works on a Macintosh because it is this just looks like an ordinary keyboard. Um, you could probably even plug it into maybe a mobile phone. I don't know, but it just looks like a USB keyboard. You don't need to install any device drivers, and all you do is whatever software you're using, whether it's a game you found on the internet or something you've put together with Scratch, is that you just tell it that when you click something or when you press the spacebar, or when you press up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, or right arrow, that tells it what to do. And then there's an earth, there's, there's the earth down here. Uh, you just plug a crocodile clip into there, and you have to hold on to that. And then whatever, you've, whatever objects you've plugged the other cables into, that completes the circuit. Does that make sense? It does, but I'm still not clear what the, what the fruit is actually doing in that. So the, the fruit, it could be any object that can conduct electricity. So any water-based food um, is what activates the control board to do what you're trying to do. Let, let me find you some examples. So if you get an alligator clip and clip it to, say, the up arrow, and then you get the other ends of the alligator clip and clip it to two ends of a banana or an orange or something, that, yeah, I'm, that's I'm, right. just, I'm just not you're clear just, what happens. Yeah, when you when you touch the object with your hand, yeah, it activates whatever key you've told it to do on the control board. So you just if you had like six bananas, you could have like a musical piano. So each every time you press a banana, say in scratch, you could use the sound um, block to play a note. You have yeah. six bananas in front of you, and you can pretend you've got a musical soundboard. So have you got the earth clipped onto yourself? Have you? Yeah, you just. Oh, I usually just hold it with my other hand. Okay, so so. Oh, right. Okay, so. Right. So the object becomes a button, and you are actually completing the circuit when you touch the object. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I missed the bit about you earthing yourself. Yeah. Let me. If I just try and share this window. Uh, here it is. Here's an example of it. Um, it also, it's also um, a control board called, is it Arduino? Arduino? And if you install the device driver separately from that, it has lights and sensors that you can do more things into. It's not something I've yeah. investigated yet. Arduinos. We, we use a thing called a Pico board, which yep. has similar kind of electronics on it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, right, I... okay. Yeah, now that makes sense now that I know you're earthing yourself on the other end. I just didn't realise that that was the missing piece. Yeah, can you see that window there? Uh, it's slowly refreshing. Um, really quick, simple how to is in this link I've just posted. So, I mean, they suggest you can use um, fruit, vegetables. I've seen someone do it with marshmallows, uh, Play-Doh. Um, you can use a pencil to create a circuit. Uh, metal objects like coins, magnets. Um, and then down here, they've got some examples. So someone's put together a scratch piano, Tetris, sound effects. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Okay, thank you again, Mark. Probably we've kept you all your days beginning, Mark. Can't feel that. Mine's ending. Peggy's night time, it's probably, Peggy, you're probably in Tuesday now, you'll be after midnight, I think. Uh, but thanks so much again, Mark, that was great. Loved all your demos and making it very clear to us. I think I'll have to get a banana and a making nation to fully understand that, but I am about to order one too. So thank you again, Mark. Thanks, uh, Nick, Peggy, Chris, for your input to it was great. So, um,
I'll have to go now. I've to shut the school on me. So thanks again, Mark. Enjoy the rest of your holidays. Are you going anywhere? Um, I've got to go to school and fix a few computers. Uh, plan on doing that today.